What's up? I'm Jesse from KarateByJesse.com, aka The Karate Nerd, and today I am again joined by Sensei Ian Abernathy. Thank you so much for sharing your time with all of us. My pleasure. Now, in a lot of kata, these ancient forms of karate, we see movements where you're standing on one leg. This looks pretty weird because in a fighting situation, you wouldn't want to be standing on one leg because you barely have any balance, right? So when you see a weird movement like this, what could the practical application be? Let's say we take uh, this from a Kata Chinto or Gankaku. Mm. How would you apply a move like this? Well, you, you're right, because it, it, it seems so unstable. Yeah. You know, why, why, why would I do this? And um, So but this is my personal take on it. Okay. Is, so do, it's all close range stuff. So I have made contact with this arm and my yep. aim is I need to get that arm out of the way. Right. So I'm going to circle and bring it down. As that does that, this exposes the back of your head. So I okay. strike down up the back of the head with a hammer fist. Again, now what I've got is the knee either to the thigh or the groin. If I go from oh, here, like, bam. bam! Now if I freeze frame at that position, I've, I've got pretty much what the, the, the cutter shows me. Right. And, and, and then of course, you know, because the, the hammer fist to the back of the head wants to take you forwards and the knee to the groin wants you to go forward yeah. so all of that will combine to nicely lead you to this position now i want to keep you there yeah so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put my hands on the elbow as as, as i as i kind of sink right so, so the next move in the kata is when you pull your hands down correct you know the cup and saucer position right because and which i will do slowly because yeah. the technique can really hurt but but so the idea was after i need you you might want to come back up so uh -huh. as you start to kind of correct yourself i go Bang. Ah, you know, against right. the, the joint. Now this brings you back down again, so I can hammer fist yet again as right. I do the kick the inside right. of the thigh. Now that's it. Now if you fall, yeah. what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stepping in with my oizuki. Right, and that's actually the next move in the kata. The next move in the kata. Ah! What could also happen, of course, is, is as that leg gets kicked, you may fall this way or you may do this. Uh -huh. So in some parts of the kata where it goes here, you're on the spot. He's fell, yeah, he's fell towards you. Right. Bang, 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 he's moved away from me. Okay. So the kata's mapping out the two options from there. Right. So. And do you think it's always like this that a kata shows you plan A, plan B, plan C? Definitely. You know, it's it, so sometimes when we see kata movements, we may see three movements in a row. Right. And then we will wonder how those three moves combine. But what the kata's really showing is saying, do this. Yeah. And depending on the enemy's response, you will go to B or C. Interesting. So you don't do A, B, and C, you do A, B, or C. And I think that's in those sequences, that's why some end with an oizuki and some end with a gakizuki. Because mm. when I kick that leg, I have no way of knowing what's going to happen until it happens. Right. And is this why we also have variations in kata, what's known as henka in Japanese? Yeah, I, I, yeah exactly. Because I think that's one of the common misunderstandings about kata is that it's fixed. Right. And therefore we're trying to apply it in a fixed way. Yeah. No, it, it's it's an example. Yeah. So then we have the, the, the like the henka was the variation techniques. Right. Well, how is he going to respond? We need plans B, C, D, E, F, and G, right. depending on what happens. Right, and that adaptability is super important for a real fight because you don't know what happens in that chaos. Right? Uh, absolutely. So there's, there's two lovely quotes on that. You've got uh, Gichi Funakoshi said, uh, "Always perform kata exactly. Combat is another matter." Right. So the kata should be precise and exact. But when I apply it, I'll go wherever I want to go. Yeah. And then Nakasone, in explaining that, said, uh, "We should never be shackled by the rituals of kata, uh -huh. but instead move freely according to the opponent's strengths and weaknesses." Nice. So wherever you end up is then that's where you know you need to be able to fight from and the kata sh gives you options to illustrate how you could possibly do that. Right. Uh, so can we have a look at the bunkai again now that we know this? Yeah, of course. Let's right from the other direction. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the, the, the key thing is, you know, we're close range. I've made contact with an arm. I need that arm out of the way. So that, that's the, the rising part. This exposes this. Bang. That's my opening movement from there. If you were to start to rise, I'm going to shock load the elbow. Boom. So that brings him back down again. I'll then hammer fist at the same time as I kick the inner thigh. In this case, you're still close. Yeah. So I would Bam. hit with the gaku and then I would be moving away from there. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that. And now you know how to use even weird moves like these <laughs> in self-defense.